no, no, no apology, Madam Speaker. Good morning. I think the chief will be still trying to connect. She is calling me now, uh, but I will, I will contact her just to assist her to connect. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaso. Uh, honorable members, uh, if you look at the, the agenda, the, those are the items uh, on the agenda this morning. Are you happy with the agenda or are there any, met, any matters you'd like included on the agenda this morning? Uh, speaker? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, this is the agenda that we know and uh, for now I just want to move that it be adopted. Thank you very much. I second. Much. Thank you, my second chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Moroto and Honorable Sheikh Imam. We now proceed to deal with items on the minutes. Uh, let's look at the minutes there and see if there is a true reflection of the discussions of the meeting of the of the meeting of. Uh, of the 3rd of February. Honorable members, are we happy with the minutes? I move for adoption of the minutes, uh, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Singh. Seconded by Sheikh Imam. Thank you, Honorable Sheikh Imam. And thank you, Honorable members. With the minutes having been adopted, we now proceed to deal with matters arising out of the minutes. Uh, on the matters, uh, there were concerns which were raised by members in relation to the electoral bill. The committee will then provide an update on whether public hearings will be conducted in all provinces as was proposed. And the committee section will provide a presentation when we deal with the items on, on the under committee matters. Then, under resumption of normal business of parliament, uh, parliamentary officials, as we all know, in consultation with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, have been very hard at work to prepare the Good Hope Chamber for our sessions. And the Good Hope Chamber will enable a hybrid uh, format Additional screens and audiovisual equipment have been installed. And yesterday, the podium was being installed, and we seem to be set, and we are, will be ready by the 23rd of February, which is the date of the budget vote. And maybe if members are around Parliament, those of you who are part of this programming committee, you may want to contact a uh, Mr. Castle and, and request him to take you through there or the Secretary of Parliament. But I can assure you it's a beautiful arrangement. It may be small, but but it's quite uh, it's okay. It's quite intimate. It it will it will be okay for our purposes on Wednesday. And then honorable members. S12A in the NCOP chamber, it will enable a hybrid, uh, of course, the access to the NCOP building is not possible yet, and, and that uh, you all are aware, the, there is currently work being done there of assessing whether we will be able to 
to work from that building, even though there isn't much structural damage. But I know that uh, water leaks have been uh, identified, electricity surges, as well as just the functioning of the air conditioning. Those are some of the things which are currently being done by the Department of Public Works. Both rooms one and two on the sixth floor of the 90th, 19th Place Street building have been prepared for a hybrid seating of the NCOP. And this should be done by the big end of April. So we'll be able to use that building for the NCOP. And then, honorable members, those are the key issues which are arising out of the minutes which I thought I should talk to. From here, I will now allow, not unless there are issues and are arising out of the minutes. Honorable Tlangwini, I see your hand. I'm sorry that I missed it. Thank, thank you, Speaker. And I didn't want to, to disturb you, Speaker. I think um, um, Mr. Singh can't adopt. He was not in the meeting. He sent an apology. So he can't adopt this set of minutes. So in, in, in him not being there, I move to adopt the minutes, uh, uh, Speaker, because he, ca he can't adopt. He was not in the meeting. Okay, yeah, you are correct. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Member Nchangwini. Uh, there is a hand of Honorable Singh and Honorable Swat. Honorable Singh, I hope you will now not uh, debate the matter. As no, 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 no. Okay, thank you very much. No, 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 I, I, I not. Okay, you may proceed then. I was just too quick on the trigger. Uh, to pull the trigger. So, but uh, thank you, Honorable Tangwini, for bringing that uh, to our attention. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to know, arising from what you said, Honorable Speaker, uh, the ASTP did say to us yesterday that there's going to be a short, medium, and long term plan with regards to us moving back physically, because we really have to move back physically sooner rather than later. And uh, we just needed a time frame when that plan will be placed on the table, uh, wherever the venue is going to be. And uh, secondly, could we have a very brief report of uh, what happened yesterday with the gas leak or the supposed ember fire that were around from somebody? Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Singh. Let's start with the first one, Honorable Singh, which is that all of us, our efforts and energies were geared at preparing for the state of the nation address whilst committees, of course, continued to run. And now, now that we're done with the state of the nation address and heading for the budget presentation, we will now have to look at what next we do beyond that. But I do want to sensitize the members that Whereas we were talking short term and having to look at options for the long term, I do want the members to be aware that when we finally go into the long term, we are likely to incur uh, costs, huge costs for the long term if we are to move out of the uh, good hope chamber to allow for all of us to be physically present uh, in the in the chamber. However, I will allow allow for the acting secretary of parliament to present to you what she thinks her options are. But I do want all of us to keep us at the back of our minds that whatever the options beyond the parliamentary precinct, if we are to move to other venues to enable all of us to be part of physical sessions, that it is going to have very serious financial implications. Um, Acting Secretary of Parliament, Ms. Kiawa, are you here? Yes, good morning, Speaker, I am here. Um, thank you, Speaker. I do good morning to honorable members. As the speaker has indicated, we were tasked to establish another stream 
of looking at possibilities of long-term space for the National Assembly Plenary. What we have done is we've drafted to the Speaker and the Chair, obviously, because it does have implications financially, a memorandum that says we're going to start having discussions. The first discussion we're having is tomorrow at 12 o'clock with the CEO of ICC. And indeed, we're going to be talking to city, the City Hall. Now, those are not the only limited explorations that we are doing. Once we have collected all the data, we will be presenting to the executive authority in line with what the speaker is saying and the executive authority because it is going to have financial implications. So you can let me just say I will stop here. The Chief Whips Forum yesterday requested that we present the next week a plan, which also includes an update of the rooms that we already have for the parties that have been impacted by the We seem to have lost the ASTP. We've lost you, Ms. Kiawa. Okay. We lost you. We lost you. Can you go back? Oh, Ms. Kiawa. Oh, oh, dude. Let me just. I'm here, ma'am. Let me switch That's off the. That's from the, the Chief video. Whip's request oh. yesterday. Okay. Um, I was saying, Chief Whip, in the same request yesterday, the Chief Whips asked that we update them on what is the long-term, at least medium to long-term accommodation that we're going to be looking at for the NA plenary. We then were requested to submit a report next week on the same matter that um, our speaker is being raised now. The plans, what it might likely cost us, to ensure that at least the National Assembly has got a chamber where plenaries will be held first. And secondly, we're asked to provide a status report of the office needs of all those who have been impacted by the fire. And then thirdly, to also give an update report on the committee rooms that are on the precinct. And we said to the Chief of Suram, we'll present that. And similarly, Speaker, we will also provide the EA, as I said, with the outcomes of the discussions that we'll have tomorrow with the CEO of ICC and, of course, the City Hall and other venues that we will consider. Finally, to do exactly what Speaker was saying, reflect the estimate costs of housing the NA in a different place from the present. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kiawa. Honorable members, <clears throat> I do want to, <clears throat> sorry, to find uh, time to discuss this matter thoroughly because even right at the beginning, before we could take a decision on the venue for the State of the Nation address, the various options which were presented to the presiding officers were such that they had very serious implications, financial implications. It doesn't matter if you're talking SONA, I mean, ICTCC. It doesn't matter if you talk continuation at the uh, city hall or even the legislative chamber or the chamber which was offered here um, by the city, by the city, all of those things uh, are likely to, even though I know some of the venues were not as appropriate because of the space, but I do want honorable members to think through these issues that if at any given time we take a decision to move to the ICT CC, we will have first, firstly to pay for the rates uh, on a monthly basis there because currently it is just a white elephant which is not being booked. Number two, we have to pay for all the services which will be rendered there, which means security, cleaning, and uh, catering. And we don't have the figures but the estimates were going to be way beyond what we would have paid at the city hall that day. So I'm just 
saying, honorable members, without demotivating the issue, it's going to be important that at some point we are all physically here, but we really have to discuss where and at what point. Now, Honorable Member Swart, you have your hand up. Good morning, Speaker, and good morning to my colleagues. Just two quick issues I um, arrayed for matters arising, and that was the electoral bill that I raised issues last, and that's matters arising. I just ask when we have the full feedback from the bill's office, from the legal section, I understand the Home Affairs Portfolio Committee, uh, if I understood correctly, has decided to request an extension of the Concord deadline. That one presumes would be done in the name of the speaker or in the department. Uh, when will that be brought, given the fact that I think um, the deadline is quite soon? So we would need to monitor that from our side as well. And then thank you for the discussion, Speaker, on the venue. I just want to again thank all staff members, Mr. Kaiser, for the work done on the Good Oak Chamber in the short term. I think it's very important for us to be seen on the precinct itself. I think the issue of costing is very important, given the fact that the budget is announced next week. One might have to have a special appropriation bill should the cost escalate, but we need to be mindful of the balance of us being in Parliament, physically very important, being on the precinct if at all possible, and then secondly, the financial constraints facing the nation as a whole. So I look forward to those discussions. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Honourable Swart. Honourable Jamwini. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I think you, you, you correctly put it, Speaker. Let's wait for the report so that we can have uh, proper discussions. And then also in terms of um, the feasibility, how is it going to um, implicate us in terms of um, finances and things like that? Um, so we need to know all of those costs, effects with every venue. Um, how much is the um, it's going to cost Parliament um, to have this uh, rentals? Um, if it's if it's going to cost uh, Amenelec because some of 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 these venues have a tendency of 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 sort of taking advantage of a situation, um, then we just hell we have to stay on the precinct. Um, and, and rotate our members um, if that is the only possible um, um, the only possible uh, chance that we are having um, in order to sit as parliament. And I think then we can also do it as uh, speaker on a case by case basis in terms of our program on which day or on which month or in which quarter um, are we supposed to be all, uh, um, there in Parliament in order for to vote and 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 so forth, and the hybrid system have been working in terms of voting. So it's not a train smash. Um, maybe perhaps that is one of the uh, positive aspects that uh, COVID have brought up that we can work remotely and and work from anywhere in the country and be able to even have voting powers as members of Parliament. So we'll be waiting for the report and then we will make our inputs further on the venue um, speaker um, in the next meeting when the report is available. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Honorable Ntangwini. Honorable Sigiwe Kwakube. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Uh, uh, perhaps I, um, if I can make a, 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 a suggestion on, on how we can go forward. I, I think I agree with you that uh, we need to have perhaps a separate discussion uh, about all these options and the cost implications of which um, so that we can, we can properly um, sort of, you know, evaluate what what is all there that is available to us because i think uh, a speaker the the reality is that while we've got to balance the need for parliament to get working again with the cost implications uh we've got to be very very careful about the fact that we can't the, the business of parliament is being curtailed somewhat by working the way that we are working yes it was useful during covid but the reality is that it is not being we're not exercising our full powers and we're not 
getting the full value of what we should. And, and there's also an impending other issue, Speaker, where, you know, when the state of disaster is completely lifted, there's issues around, um, you know, public participation in our sittings. What do we do then? Because we can't keep preventing people from being able to attend some of our sittings, attend our committee meetings. So I agree with you that I think maybe as a way forward, um, we then combine what the Chief Whip's uh, forum had requested, the report, uh, with the discussion that we have here. And maybe next week, we can have a, a discussion just pure on 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 what do we do for the long and medium term uh, strategy thank you thank you very much honorable Sibiwe. honorable Ngabayom Zinkwapa. Uh, speaker thank you very much i think the latter speaker in particular honorable Kwahube, is as false has covered me to a large extent that the, the issue for me really and for the party is that uh, the virtual platform and the virtual system has worked to a large extent, but it has, over time, lessened the effectiveness of parliament as an institution that is supposed to hold the executive to account for a number of reasons that we can discuss. Yes, meetings do take place, but to achieve the outcomes that we set ourselves before meetings. There are quite a number of other manner of challenges uh, which present themselves when you're using a virtual platform to hold members of the executive to account. So we also, from, from my view, from where I'm sitting, we are losing home ground advantages, Parliament, because that is the only thing that enabled us to make sure that we're able to pressure people, work as the collective, in getting members of the executive to account to Parliament to, and to provide the necessary answers on these issues. But Honorable Steve Swart is also correct in saying that obviously we have to be responsible in how we uh, we consider the financial implications of uh, of renovating Parliament, of making sure that uh, as as many MPs as possible are able to come back to Parliament. But indeed, there will come a time where we have to consider special appropriations, like we've done for other entities, but do so very responsibly. But the process that is about to be undertaken by the uh, the ASTP is very important in that we need to make sure that we don't rush the process, the costing is done properly, so that there are no ne unnecessary cost overruns in future where we find ourselves as this body and this collective that is the political leadership of parliament having to account to the public for some cost overruns which were uh, uh, not properly catered for. And, and perhaps, uh, Speaker, as a, as a time in jest, I think we should go to China and get China, if they could build a, state, a hospital in 10 days, it should be possible for them to help us to renovate this parliament in record time. Because my fear and my concern is that if we're to only rely on PPW to do that for us, I'll probably be an ancestor by the time they complete the construction process. Thank you. Thank you very much, I'm sure you're not in a hurry to be an ancestor though. We are very young. We don't want young sisters on the other side. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Pemi Machodina, Chief Whip of the Majority Party. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, and good morning to all colleagues. Honorable Speaker, I think uh, we, are, we are trying to discuss something that we don't have details on. And I want to suggest that let's keep let's let's let's, let's stop discussing this matter now. Let's allow a proper comprehensive report that is going to be tabled. And surely by next week, uh, costing what we've done, but just a plan to say what is the thinking. I want to suggest that we close this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Majodina. If I may add to what you are saying, honorable members, I just I just, I do want to, maybe ASTP will find it difficult to say this, but the reality is that it's not going to be able, they are not going to be able to provide that kind of detail next week. If anything, let's give them tools, because remember, all focus and energies were spent on preparing for the state of the nation address, even though we do have work streams, and now preparing for the budget and making sure that the chamber is set and everything. 
I would really want to make an appeal as members uh, make their contributions to just push it a little further, even if it's you give them, you grant them two more weeks within which to come uh, and, and present. But next week is going to be very difficult. I know that they have estimates. We don't want to be talking about estimates. When we finally take, in fact, I want to propose that that meeting be a special meeting of the programming committee. Special meeting where you do not have any other items on the agenda, but rather focus on what is to be done so that we have adequate time to engage on those matters so that when we come out of this meet, that meeting, we should all be comfortable and be satisfied that whatever decision we take will be the best route for us. So, Honorable Imam Sheikh, as I invite you to speak, I would <clears throat> like you to talk to that matter as well. Thank you. Honorable Sheikh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, let me start off by saying, you know, I'm not sure whether a report that we are waiting for, which can take a while, is the correct thing to do, because I think we must admit that the challenges we face in terms of coming together is a long-term issue. Uh, and I must agree with you that we need to co contain the cost. And there's no doubt about it. We're in the 21st century. The virtual platform appears to be working. There's no doubt about that. Um, but we do also have other options, you know, for specific days. We've also got the Pan-African Parliament that is standing empty most of the time and other options. Of course, you've got to look at the cost factor and things. While some may argue you're going to need to look for accommodation, let us not forget that, you know, most people flying to Cape Town fly via Johannesburg. In any case, the cost of flights are much cheaper and whatever. So there's a whole lot. One needs to do an exercise on it. But I think we need to be realistic that we do have a problem and we need to come together. And I think some of the colleagues have suggested that the virtual platform does work at this point. In time. And so from the NFP point of view, we believe that whilst it's important to bring all members together so that we are like a complete family and being able to contribute uh, extensively in debates. And like I said in the chief of yesterday, people want to grandstand and things. I think what is important to note is just that the issue of parliament is not going to be sorted out anytime soon, a good couple of years, we must understand that. So we need to, at some stage, address the issue of alternative accommodation or put emphasis on a hybrid system, which is what we have been doing. That is my suggestion, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Sheikh Imam. The next speaker on my list is Honorable Hope Papo. Honorable Hope. Uh, I actually agree with uh, what Member Changwini said uh, the, uh, for the for a while. Uh, it was she was it was backed by um, mm -hmm. Member Shaikh and also that uh, with the Chief Whip. But also your caution uh, request that we give it a, a bit of more time. Uh, so for my view is that uh, MPs going to the people is not hindered. The only thing is gatherings. But virtual it's for meetings and making decisions. Because even now, MPs can still go to communities and engage uh, in, the, in the various provinces out of Cape Town. So I think the issue of us meeting and making decisions Member Tanguin has covered it because uh, of rotational and uh, virtual. Virtual is now part of our route. <laughs> so I, when we veer into the issue of virtual hindering per parliament, we can, there are many ways we can do it. So maybe let's uh, follow what uh, uh, the Chief Whip has said and then get that report. Because there are issues which were raised about virtual disrupting our work when we can go to provinces and engage with people there because even gatherings numbers are allowed there in the communities as long as there's compliance. Because the reality is that we have not yet reached 70% as a nation uh, of, of vaccination. We're still going to be settled with the pandemic also. So uh, loosening disaster uh, act does not mean that the pandemic is gone, that we're no longer going to comply with anything. 
So uh, that proposal which was made by the chief whip and yourself saying we must at least give it a bit of time to have a sense where we're going it is the best. And in the meantime, we will get a report of what we're going to do in the next uh, week and quick coming weeks. And what Member Changwini said, that uh, we just rotate members uh, with uh, whatever venue we have uh, on the venues we have on the precinct. And committees have not been hindered to make decisions and people can still go, members can still go to the, to the other eight provinces out of Western Cape to meet with, the, with, 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 with people and communities. Anyway, people are not coming out of work Cape Town. We had to go to them outside Cape Town. They were not coming to Cape Town. MPs went to them and that, that can, is still continuing. Thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable Hope Papo. That concludes this discussion on the report of the Secretary of Parliament in relation to the venue, which is that honorable members, we will then schedule this meeting for a later date. When I look at the diary here, the 24th would have been a meeting where we discuss this matter or the 23rd by the chief whips, but I do request that we allow for them, for the team to prepare a comprehensive report and provide us with this report, not next week, maybe in two or three weeks' time. Uh, maybe uh, the chief of the majority party and the acting secretary of parliament would want to make a proposal on the date. But there's another matter which was raised, which is the issue of uh, the reports that uh, there was fire uh, maybe um, yesterday. Maybe the acting secretary of parliament should deal with that item now. Secretary um, of Parliament, I'm, I'm I must say, yes, ma'am. I, I, I am on the platform. My, my connection is a bit erratic. Yesterday, we got a report from our colleagues um, who are working with the engineers who are in the National Assembly looking at the structural damage. And I received a text message, some spots that were still hot, and they were thinking there could be at least some areas where there was still fire that is, um, or some hot spots as they spoke, to, as they said. We informed the executive authority, the speaker, and the chair, because at that time they had said they were going to be bringing a fire truck. And it was in the middle of the response to the state of nation by the president. We did not want the whole parliament to be seeing a fire truck coming onto the president. We quickly reported that and also asked our, our spokesperson to prepare a, a release um, to just taper down sensation. Subsequently, the truck wasn't there. And then we got a full text message that said, in fact, it was not the fire. The fire, fire uh, engineers came. They established that it was a fire. They found nothing that related to the fire. However, they did say they do not know as yet what was it that caused the boot of one of the in engineers to melt. They only suspect it could be a chemical on the floor. I subsequently reported that to the speaker and also informed the chief whip of the, the chairperson of the chief whip of the majority party, the chairperson of the chief whip forum of National Assembly. And um, that's subsequently the disaster management in Western Cape communicator to say they have. They communicated to say they have cleared the site, um, and um, and the, the place the engineers could could proceed to do their work. Thanks. You are muted, Madam Speaker. That is the report, honourable members. Are there any hands, uh, honourable Hope Papo? I don't know whether that's your old hand or a new one. Okay, Honorable Members, Honorable Singh, 
Uh, no, uh, just to say thank you very much for, for the report. Uh, it did uh, cause a bit of an alarm. But I think another point, Honorable Speaker, is this question of internet connection. I mean, yesterday I was in my office in Parliament and it kept on saying unstable, unstable connection. Mm -hmm. And we see that both uh, ASTP and Mr. Kass are having some difficulties. So can IT just please check on that within parliamentary precincts? Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Singh. In fact, if I may say this, there are areas where in, within the parliamentary precinct where if you do connect, you find that you cannot at times go through at all into a meeting. So there's no network in some of the areas. And I think that it's something which uh, uh, ASTP, you should, you should get your team to look into as proposed by Honorable Singh. Honorable members, are there any other comments on this matter? Yes, Honorable Imam. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to raise my concern. You know, months after this fire, uh, you know, yesterday, uh, and rightfully so, Parliament, uh, the Acting uh, Secretary picked up that there might be something wrong, uh, 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 and it might be some chemical. Now, the question that arises is, have we got the capacity to be able to, as a matter of urgency, establish what is going on in Parliament? Is this another attempt of sabotage? Is it, you know, leading from the first fire? Uh, you know, there's so much of uncertainty around this, Honorable Speaker. And in order to put our minds to rest, we need to, as a matter of urgency, get to the bottom of what is going on. Because it means that at any given time, you can have another fire or something else can go wrong. And I'm very worried given the fact that so many things have happened since July, Honorable Speaker. I don't know if Parliament can comment on that, if the Acting Speaker can comment on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Sheikh Imam. Uh, Honorable members, any other hands? Any other inputs on this matter? Honorable Papo? My fear is that without any information from experts, people who are knowledgeable about these matters, we're going to have a general discussion which is not informed. I thought we were waiting for the proper report on the full report of what happened in Parliament from the, from experts and everybody else. It will come to the executive, and then it will actually come here. Now we're supposed to discuss what we suspect in Parliament. I don't know. Maybe I'm, bit, I'm, bit, I'm a bit confused of, on the discussion. Thank you very much, Honorable Papu. Honorable members, uh, there's another hand. Honorable uh, Nabayom Zinguakwa. No, 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 no. Uh, speaker, I was going. I agree with Honorable Hopa. He's quite correct. We need to discuss it when we have all the relevant information to be able to make an informed decision. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Members. That was the last uh, speaker on my list on this matter. I do also wish to caution members because I believe that when we do receive, when we finally receive the various a report on the various options we need to consider, we will probably at that point or even later, maybe we can call on the ministers who are dealing with these issues to get their experts to come in and give us a quick uh, preliminary assessment of what they think could be the problem. Because as we have seen it, Parliament is not the only structure which has been a, a target of this uh, assault. So I think that as Honorable uh, Hope and Honorable uh, Kwakwa have alluded, 
this is an area that requires necessary expertise. Uh, so maybe we should not speculate, but rather pause on that one and, and request the appropriate uh, authorities at some point to make that presentation to this team. If that is agreed and supported colleagues, we then deal with our next item on the agenda. And the next item on the agenda will be, having dealt with the matters arising, we then deal with the reports by the committee section. And the report by the committee section will be presented by, on, by Advocate Dow. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker, honorable members and colleagues. Uh, we can go to slide number three on our report. On this slide, Madam Speaker, it's just an update on the bills that have been with committees for long. The positive development is with the <coughs> sorry, uh, prevention of hate crimes and hate speech. As members can see that the committee is having public hearings, is planned public hearings in March. The other committees have indicated that they will consider the bills uh, next term. The next slide. On this slide, the development is with cannabis for private purposes, wherein the committee is planning to receive responses from the department and also the electoral law second amendment bill, that is the private members bill, the committee is planning to consider the report on the 22nd of February. And then the national health insurance, the committee has done public hearings as indicated. The next slide. On this slide, it is the economic regulation of transport bill. That is the update 15 March, the committee will do the clause by clause. And then another update is the National Road Traffic Amendment Bill. The committee is considering proposed amendments on the 1st and 8th of March and clause by clause consideration 22nd March. The next slide. On this slide, the update are with the gas amendment bill uh, on this the PC on mineral resources is planning to complete the remaining two provinces, Northwest and Limpopo. We are waiting for the specific dates. And also there are two bills before the trade and industry that have been retained by the president. The committees have uh, requested for extension for public submission. And the committee, because of that, will consider finalizing the two bills uh, next term. Thank you. On this slide, the only update is the Disaster Management Act before PC on COCTA. The committee is having deliberations on the 18th. Next slide. On this slide, the only update is on National Land Transport Amendment Bill. The committee is planning to consider the responses on the president's reservation on the 22nd of February. There are no, yeah, on this slide, Madam Speaker, it's a matter of electoral laws, second amendment bill, the bill that has been referred to the committee. Uh, last week, members wanted to know whether the committee will be having uh, public hearings in other provinces. Indeed, the matter was taken to the committee. The committee is revising its program, but that will have an impact on the date that the committee was planning to finalize the bill. And as indicated, the committee is contemplating uh, requesting parliament that uh, an extension be requested. And I believe colleagues from the legal services may add more uh, on this when they come. Next slide. Yeah, on the slide, there are no further updates. The next slide. On this slide, that, that is the filling of vacancies. The update on this one is the Central Drug Authority. The committee, the, the, the referral has been withdrawn. 
because the committee has been advised that the minister in terms of the legislation is not uh, expected to appoint a full board. The next slide. On this slide, the Standing Committee on Finance uh, today is uh, being briefed by legal services on the uh, draft regulations on the financial management of Parliament and Provincial Act. The next slide. On this slide, the two updates is on the international agreement before PC on transport. The committee is having briefings the 22nd of February. And the filling of vacancies for Public Service Commission, the committee is currently busy with the interviews and the aim is to finalize the process by the 23rd of February. The next slide. On this slide is the appointment of the Inspector General of Intelligence. The committee has uh, completed the interviews based with the deliberations. They are also deliberating today. After this, the committee will decide on the date to finalize its report. This concludes our reports, Madam Speaker. Yalewo. Thank you, Advocate Dao, for the report. Honorable members, there's the report. Are there, yes, there is a hand. The Honorable uh, Chief Whip of the Majority Party, Honorable Machotina. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. Thank you very much for this uh, report. Honorable Speaker, I want to address myself on the electoral uh, reforms uh, amendment uh, bill. Uh, with, uh, with the time frame uh, of, of, of Concord, which is uh, 10 of June, and uh, the requirement for public hearings, I, I want to fully support that... Uh, Whilst we, we have that plan from the portfolio committee, let our legal uh, unit uh, also as, uh, advise uh, the presiding officers on uh, on application for extension. But we must show course that uh, this is what we want to do. This is a very involved um, a, a piece of legislation which cannot uh, be, 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 be summarized in terms of public hearings. Each and every province, each and if for that matter, it was supposed to be each and every municipality because this involves uh, electorate and electorate is, 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 is all over the country. So I want to fully suggest that uh, this, uh, if we agree with, uh, with the committee to go ahead as it is uh, to conduct uh, these public hearings, then uh, uh, full uh, support is needed uh, for, for that committee. Full reinforcement is needed for that committee in terms of parliament to ensure that uh, they go as far as possible to reach uh, the electorate and to, 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 to allow them to participate in this matter. You'll remember, uh, Honorable Speaker, that uh, we once uh, made a proposal as the ANC that uh, due to the, 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 the gravity of uh, what uh, this committee is supposed to, to, to deal with, we once proposed that uh, if possible, uh, can we uh, consider to have an other committee uh, that will, 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 will deal with this, but um, but we did not discuss that thoroughly. However, uh, we can we can, uh, can stay with uh, the fact that uh, the Oklahoma Affairs Portfolio Committee must proceed, but I think uh, they need more time. They need a lot of support uh, in terms of uh, legal uh, support and, uh, and administrative support to ensure that they reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Machutina. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Mr. Satsimodi. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. I wanted to suggest that uh, 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 berries do not ripen according to the wishes of the month. So the the uh, the request of the committee dealing with this electoral bill may have to prepare a plan B uh, in case uh, our request is rejected. We mustn't assume because we are persuaded by the argument 
that this is complex. It will need a, a lengthy work as a, as Honorable Majudina is pointing out. That necessarily the court might find the same reason. So we must prepare in the event that they say no, because ultimately the uh, 2024 seems to be the target for implementation of this law. And if that is the case, its extension uh, is likely to also create complications for, for even the IEC, who said in the recent uh, outcome of the elections that never should they be forced to conduct an election in 42 days, just as an example. So the, because of those potential uh, potholes along the route, uh, we must organize a plan B, request the committee to think about and work through a plan B, uh, reduce, for example, the intensity of the consultation, for example. So that's my recommendation, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Uh, honorable members, I don't see another hand, but I do want us in summarizing this particular item that we should consider very seriously the matter raised by uh, the Honorable Deputy Speaker, which is that we should look at option B in the event the CC were to reject uh, the proposal for an extension. Uh, and the other question is whether, in fact, we then proceed with the appeal for an extension to the CC. Now, I should, um, I should, uh, so let me allow you to speak on the matter. We proceed. Is that agreed? Honorable members seem to be agreeing. I haven't seen or heard any objections to that matter. Then we consider what uh, Honorable Tinodi has uh, proposed, and, and we will then be advised by the team. Honorable, um, no, not honorable now. It will be Mr. Castle. On this matter. Madam Speaker, we, we certainly will ask the, the legal services to, to advise on the issue. But indeed, what the Deputy Speaker has said, we, we, we really want to thank him for that because we must always prepare for Plan B. But legal services will certainly advise when I will proceed with the matter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tasso. I now see the hand of Honorable Steve Swart. Um, speak, I'm, I'm largely covered by Mr. Tasso. Maybe legal services can give us a, an idea of the time frame to bring such an application um, for an extension. Um, but we, I, I appreciate what the Deputy Speaker has said. There has in the past been cases where the Constitutional Court has refused extensions where a long time period has lapsed already. And we made this point continually in this parliament that the delay in bringing the bill to parliament is not parliament's making, but the order is against parliament. The bill was only introduced this year. So we would have to make a very strong case out. But thank you, I'm largely covered. I would like to hear from legal services, uh, but I'm fully supportive of an application and then a plan B as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Swart. Uh, that having been proposed, I want to request that we allow for the legal section to work um, on this matter and present a report at the next meeting of the programming committee, which will be next week, Thursday. If that is agreed, Honorable Members, we then proceed to deal with the rest of the issues. Are there any further items under committee? Section. And we'll now proceed to the bill's office. We now proceed then to the bill's office, honorable members. 
and I invite uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Bell. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. It's Ms. Mbata from thank the Bell's you, Ms. Office. Ms. Mbata. Ms. Mbata. Um, thank you. On our report today, we will report on slide two from our report. Um, on slide two, we have highlighted bills that were recently introduced and referred to committees, which brings up the number of bills before NA committees to 42. And we will move to slide number four. On slide number four, we have uh, bills that have been certified to be introduced. We've got the Climate Change Bill and the Older Persons Amendment Bill. And on the last slide, which is slide number five, we have the Criminal Procedure Amendment Bill that has been signed by the President as Act 16 of 2021. And the second language of the Act was Africans. And Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. That's all from our report. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Mbata. Honorable members, are there any comments on the report from Ms. Mbata on bills? Honorable Singh? Uh, yes, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. I don't know if we're going to get a report on constitutional court bills, but let me just raise the matter. I know there was a judgment given by the Constitutional Court on the 31st of December by Justice Matlanga regarding the maintenance of Surviving Spouses Act, and I think it dealt with the Interstate Succession Act, where Parliament was required to consider amendments to legislation within 18 months. Now, I don't know what time frame, uh, you know, whether the court has written to us or not, and if legal services can follow that up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Singh. Legal, are you ready for with that uh, report? Yes, I recognize uh, Mr. Sidiwe Njikela. Sidiwe? Yes, can you hear me? Sidiwe Njikela? Yes, Speaker. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, Speaker, I, I think the Deputy Speaker has already summarized it, but I think we should just come in as legal to explain what we see as the process. On Tuesday, the PC has made a resolution that an application for extension must be made. We advised at the time that it is better to make an application as soon as Parliament realizes that it will not be in a position to, to meet the deadline. And we think now is the right time. And based on that advice, the committee made the decision that it made that an application must be issued. Um, the, the speaker will recall and the committee will recall that when the matter was before the CC, what we presented to the CC was the, exactly the issue of the time frames. We had at the time requested 36 months for the purposes of this. That request was turned down by the Constitutional Court. And I think this is the reality that we are facing and it aligns with what the Deputy Speaker was saying. Now we find ourselves in a situation where we have to approach the same court after it had already turned us down. But in the previous applications that we had made, we were turned down. And in those instances, there were alternative mechanisms that the courts had put in place for the ongoing business of parliament. But in this particular instance, as we speak, there is nothing other than the 10th of June. So we will be initiating that process and we are in the process of finalizing an authorization memo for both the POs and for the financial authorization to the accounting officer. We are hoping that will be ready by this afternoon for authorization by the POs. So that has already been initiated. We already had counsel that assisted us when we went to the Constitutional Court. We are not sure yet if those counsel 
will be available this time. That team was led by advocate Sankov at the time. So we are hoping that they can still be available to assist us to, to move the application to the Constitutional Court. But I think this is the best time to do it rather than later. And I think that's what in the Lamusa judgment was directed by the court in as far as the matter is concerned. Thank you very much, Speaker. I don't want to go to, to the issue of legal strategy in public. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sibiwa uh, Njikela. I have a hand here. Madam Speaker, this is Charmaine from the uh, Charmaine from the Charmaine van der Meven. Thank you, Speaker. I'm from Legal Services. And just to, to quickly answer the, the question from Mr. Singh regarding the matter of Baniwa versus the Master of the High Court uh, that affected the Maintenance of Surviving Spouses Act and the Interstate Succession Act. Um, we have reported on this um, at the previous meeting of, of the NAPC, and it is also in the report that was circulated to the members. So we are aware of this matter. We have indicated um, the matter to to the um, NIPC. The, the suspension order in that case lapses on the 29th of June, 2023. And we have already advised the, the committee chairperson uh, of this matter and of the way forward. Um, so just to confirm the matter is, it, we are aware of the matter. We've made the committee aware of the matter as well. Thank you, Chairperson. So, thank you, Speaker, sorry. Thank you very much, Shaman. On the matter, none. That was the report. Hello. No, severe called by no severe. Yes, honourable Majordina. Severe, my name sink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, honorable members. That was the report. Um, that was a brief uh, uh, report by by Shame and and Sivewe. And uh, maybe we should proceed uh, and uh, get a commitment from you, Mr. Castle, as to how soon we can have a better interaction with this. We, we certainly will, ma'am. As soon as we get the advice from legal services, we will um, provide speaker with a report. And by next week, we should be reporting what uh, steps have since been taken. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay, I was just about to suggest to you that you should set time frames for the legal services because I don't want us to delay unnecessarily on the matter. Okay. Thank you very much, honorable members. Honorable members, we now uh, proceed to deal with the parliamentary program, the draft parliamentary, and I will now allow the deputy chief whip of the majority party, Ms. Labude. Is it Ms. Labude or Ms. Musuma? Ms. Musuma. Thank you. Sorry, Ms. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Speaker, and good morning, colleagues and honorable members. We are going to, we are not going to go through uh, week by week in terms of the days. However, we will highlight the important uh, uh, um, activities that we think are important for worth noting. And safe to say, Honorable Speaker, that the, 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 the program hasn't changed is the same as what has been uh, circulated and also presented in our previous me meetings. We will start, Honourable Speaker, with the uh, international relations for the completeness of the of the presentation. Uh, diary is that IR diary with the CPA UK actions to prevent human trafficking through sports. It's a workshop that will be held on the from the 22nd to the 24th of, uh, of February. 2022, which is going to be held at a visual platform. Secondly, on the 2nd, from the 28th of February to the 4th of March at, uh, Pak uh, at Baksha, Baksha War in Pakistan, there will be 
a CPA Asia Regional uh, Conference that will be held on the sec from the 2nd to the 8th of March in Johannesburg. There will be SADC PF uh, executive meeting, meetings that will be held. And from the 20, 20th to the 24th of March at, in Bali, in Indonesia, there will be one, the 144th IPU Assembly and related meetings that will be held. And from the 4th to the 8th of April, 2022, there will be Judicial Service Commission sittings. Allow me, Honorable Speaker, then to go to week four, which uh, is this week, and I'll take it as week that was, and I'll request that we go to week four, week five, I mean. Week five, Honorable Speaker, uh, I'll deal with the, with, the, with the framework of all the weeks. Safe to say that Mondays, as usual, are going to be constituent period a uh, day. And then Tuesday committees on Wednesdays in the mornings till mid midday will be committees. Then the, the, the chief whips forum, which is a closed meeting, uh, uh, followed by the plenary sitting, which will be held on hybrid, which is very worth noting that will be introducing appropriation bill as well as division of revenue bill. On Thursday will be a programming committee like today, and then the caucus for those political parties that will deem to hold their caucuses. Then Friday will be normal committee days. So as it follows like that, I'm not going to repeat it in other weeks, Honorable Speaker. We'll go then to week six. Week six for wet noting is our go to Tuesday. Uh, uh, noon, which is 14 hours, that we have our hybrid uh, sitting. We will be dealing with our routine work of parliament, which will be member statements, legislations, and committees and reports, uh, committee reports, motions without notice and notices of motion, followed by on, on Wednesday. Uh, I, I, I did indicate that I'm not going to repeat that one. I'll suggest that we move a little bit up, which is a standard program in terms of that. Let's go to week, um, week, uh, week, week seven, please, if we may. Uh, week seven, same applies, uh, safe to say, on or, on, the, um, on Thursday, then we will hold our sitting hybrid. And uh, on the 10th of March is the same, also hybrid in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, worth noting on the 10th of uh, week seven is the on Thursday that we'll have uh, a hybrid uh, sitting, which, which will be dealing with the condolences. May their soul rest in peace, Honorable Duman, late Dumankos and Honorable Klo uh, on that one and receive committee reports. May we go to week um, eight, 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 eight as well, Chairperson, uh, Honorable Speaker is the same. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it, safe to say at 14 hours on, on Tuesday and, and Wednesday. Soma. Honorable Speaker. Soma. Yes, Honorable Speaker. Can you hear me? Okay. No, you are okay now. Okay, yes, yes, yes. You had okay. a problem of network. Oh, my apology. I've switched off my video as well. Uh, uh, the rest, Honorable Speaker, is still the same running, uh, 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 avoiding that I will repeat myself if in next week I'll say as, as circulated because I've, I've set up the framework in terms of the committees which starts on Tuesdays and uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays uh, sittings, but I highlighted those days that would not necessarily have sittings and highlighted the, the sittings. But uh, may I then go to, uh, yes, a little bit down again. Yes, week, 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 uh, week, week seven, please. It's week 10, I mean, sorry. Week 10. Week 10, I have safe to worth noting, uh, Honorable Speaker, will be receiving on that week oral uh, questions for reply by Deputy President. And uh, the, uh, yes, the rest is still the same as committees and, and related matters. And uh, that will bring us to the end of the, our, our term which then uh, between the 4th and the 14th of April is constituents period. I know at the, if I may deal with this matter so that it's not, it's not raised again here. It was raised yesterday at the Chief Whips Forum, Honorable Speaker, that uh, a clarity was seeked in terms of this uh, 22nd of February that we're not going to have a sitting. Yes, we have dedicated that day as well for committees. The reason is because we are awaiting for scheduling or ATC ATC of, of, of reports from various committees. And also we have also received a, a list of uh, labs matters that were in, in, uh, in last year, 
which will follow the due processes in terms of reviving those matters. As they get revised, then they will also be uh, uh, put for scheduling for the sittings of the House. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Lissuma. So, Honorable Members, are there any comments on the on the procedure Kwahube, followed by Honorable Steve Swart and then Honorable Majodina? Thanks, Speaker. This is possibly the most amount of viewers I've had in one meeting ever. <laughs> um, just a couple of questions from my side. Um, the one is the 194 committee uh, process regarding the public protector, just to understand, um, you know, from your side, what the process is going to be there. Um, and and uh, what the sort of timelines are, uh, because of course now the, the judgment has been handed down. So it would be just useful to get a, a sense from you on, on that. Um, and then I obviously heard the, the, the issue around the 22nd and then 24th, and, and I accept that. I just do want to then ask, I mean, two things with relates to, which relates to the two, sitting days that we don't have sittings. The one is of the 42 bills that are before the NA, are any of them ready to go to the House, uh, which were mentioned in the legislation report? Uh, and so perhaps, you know, is, is there any way that that can be incorporated in our program? The only reason I'm a little bit pedantic about the speakers, because sometimes we have a very easy beginning of the term, and then towards the end, we are considering and almost just rushing through a program. So it, it's quite useful to pace ourselves already now so that at, at the end of each term, we're not just considering reports and, and not giving it uh, uh, due attention. And then just to also find out the, the committee reports that had lapsed, what just for my indulgence and perhaps for my orientation, what is then the process with regards to just reintroducing them uh, back into into the program, uh, and and that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Wahube. Honourable Swa. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I notice the twenty first of March is a Monday. That is Human Rights Day. Will we be having our normal human rights debate sometime during that week or another week? Um, will that also be scheduled at a later stage? Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Swans, Honorable Machudina. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, there is a debate on Human Rights Day on the 22nd. Uh, it has been there uh, since uh, the, the past two weeks. Uh, we, we, we agreed on, on, on it. Honorable Speaker, I want to, to make a plea that uh, we, we participate in uh, uh, various uh, international and regional fora, but uh, we hardly schedule the, those reports to be tabled in the House. Even the, the protocols that have to be ratified, you are very lax when it comes to that. For instance, with the Pan-African Parliament, there is Malabo Protocol, which members don't have details because ever since Mina, I arrived in the, in the, in the sixth uh, term, there was not a single report that was, uh, that was, 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 uh, 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 all the, affiliation where we are part of that state. So I want to plead that uh, whilst uh, the activities of going there, um, uh, uh, attending those conferences and things, then what next? I, I really want to, to make a plea that let's, let's table that so that even South Africans must know what is that we do in this fora as, 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 as a, a national uh, um, a parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Machutina. Uh, before I allow you, Mr. Council, let me recognize Honorable Frolic and Honorable Imam Sheikh. And then you will take us through the issue, the, the process of the PP section 194. And yeah, Honorable Frolic. Now, good morning, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. May I just indicate, Honorable Speaker, that I signed off yesterday an application for the committee that the Honorable Kwarubeth referred to, to meet this coming Friday. 
The practice is, that is the one now on the public protector. The practice is, is that they will now develop a program. And once they have agreed to the program, they will indicate the dates on which they will deliberate on the matter. And then also the date that they project that they will be ready to bring a report back to the House. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, I'm putting severe pressure on the different committees who have legislation in front of them to process that legislation as far as possible. I don't know, I don't want to go back to the report that Advocate Tau gave because there's quite detailed reports in there on each and every piece of legislation. When is it anticipated that it will be ready to come back to the House? But we do operate on the principle that as soon as legislation has been processed by the committee, and it is ready to go to the house, then the programming whip will take care of the situation as to when it will be scheduled. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Frolik. Honorable Sheikh Imam. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I must agree with the uh, uh, Honorable Chief Whip on the issue of reports, particularly from international forums. You know, I used to be a member of the SADC PF. There's so much of unfinished business, Honorable Speaker. Where we've even established the KPMG gave a report of over 70 million rand that was spent on a program. And when they did the investigation, people on the ground knew nothing about it. But because we don't get these reports coming and being debated here in Parliament, we are not able to deal with this. My personal view from what I've observed, Honorable Speaker, is we're spending so much of money. We had times when there for 10 days, but only two or three days of work is being done. And it's just a wasted exercise of money spent in hotels and travel and uh, pedium and things like that. So I think it's very important that these reports are also brought on every time that they appear, that they must bring these reports and it must be tabled. And we must raise concerns as to what is actually going on. We cannot be wasting taxpayers' money and not getting value for money. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Imam Sheikh. Honorable Lichisa, Deputy Speaker. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to suggest that uh, I guess we must take responsibility for not passing on this information to the programming uh, team. There are, there are three meetings, uh, although they are, uh, two of them are ex-co meetings of the CPA in Africa, uh, which is between the 5th and 9th of March uh, of the Africa region, and the other is 20th, 26th of August. Um, in, this is the international in Canada. Uh, there's an, uh, an ex co meeting in India, uh, but we'll provide those details to the uh, programming uh, team uh, so that it is incorporated in that thing. Because um, only the, the August one in Canada may involve a bigger dele uh, delegation of slight numbers, but the others are really one or two people attending an ex co session such as we sit in those two forums. And I agree with, uh, with the Chief Whip about putting them some of the reports above the line uh, for communication. I do also, Madam Speaker, suggest that we too, uh, you and the chairperson of the NCOP in our program include the um, speaker's forum dates and also reports arising from those speakers for a meeting so that they constitute part of what information goes to members, broadly speaking, and they also know in advance when those are going to take place. If there are issues they would like us to put on the agenda of the speakers forum, for example, that they can do so because these are matters that impact on the entirety of the legislative sector. So that's a platform that's very important and has been developing pretty well and relatively coherently. And so I think it would be appropriate and time us now uh, under the leadership of yourself and the chairperson to have it in the programming uh, for information to members and others.
Thank you very much, Honorable um, Deputy Speaker. Honorable um, Sidiwe Kwahube. Why do you have two hands, Sidiwe? You have two hands there. Apologies, Speaker. It's because I'm battling with my other device, so I've got uh, uh, two devices connected. Um, okay. I, do, I just want to... Okay, just a quick question. I apologize for not having added it to my initial input. I just wanted to find out, uh, uh, Speaker, from you. Um, I am made aware that uh, um, constitutional motions that are sent to your office are have by uh, um, convention are given uh, precedence to be considered and to be added to the program. So I just wanted to also find out from you um, and perhaps for your guidance here, uh, a motion that was uh, submitted to your office last week by the, the leader of the opposition and how that will be handled just going forward. Of course, it being a constitutional motion and uh, requiring urgent attention. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Frolic, and then Masbulele. Well, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I just want to correct the date for the meeting of the Section 194 Committee. That committee is, in fact, meeting on Tuesday the 22nd, so it's not this Friday. It is next Tuesday, and my apologies for um, the earlier date that I've given. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Frolic. Uh, Mr. Tasso. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I think Honorable Frolic has dealt with the Section 194 Committee. I would have indicated the issue of Tuesday. With regard to bills, there are no bills currently on the order paper um, ready for consideration by the House. There are, however, bills that were ready towards the end of last year and that lapsed. For instance, the Ease of Doing Business Bill, National Health Amendment Bill, and the pensions fund amendment board. So that those those bills have since lapsed. Now the question was asked: How do you revive those or reports? Uh, it can only be by the house, and there's usually a discussion at the level of the chief whip's forum, um, led by the chief whip of the majority party, where a decision is taken on what uh, should be revived and what should not be revived. On um, the matter of international convent, international or reports emanating from international uh, uh, undertakings, indeed, we'll follow up on that, Madam Speaker, to just make sure, one, that those reports are tabled, um, two, that we get guidance, certainly from um, the House Chair for International Relations and also from the Speaker, um, where applicable, on which of those reports should be brought forward for consideration by the House because there could be those that do not necessarily have to be considered by the House, but they must go to uh, to committees. Um, Madam Speaker, I think those are the, yes, in terms of constitutional motions, uh, the motion that the honor, Honorable Deputy Chief Whip of the opposition is referring to, the Speaker is, in, is applying herself uh, to the matter, and, and, and of course the Speaker will give her a response as soon as possible, but certainly such motions, constitutional motions, are given priority. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tasso. Honorable members, just on the matter of the reports on conferences, I think that the critical report which should be presented to, to uh, the Assembly as quickly as possible is the one which was referred to on, by Honorable um, the Chief Whip of the Majority Party. The reason being that this is a, a report of a conference of the Pan-African Parliament which collapsed in May last year. I do want to suggest that the Honorable Chief Whip for the purposes of uh, dissemination of information and providing clarity on some of the issues which uh, uh, emanated out of that conference, we do need to schedule that one to, to put it on the 
on the program of parliament as quickly as possible, starting with a proper brief to an appropriate committee or even here to the programming committee. You may want to select together with uh, Dr. Masondo how to do it. Maybe we'll take it to a joint uh, programming committee. But that one is a matter which is very urgent, which has been, which is currently being dealt with, which very soon may as well arise around towards the end of March, April of this year. So that one needs to come to the house as quickly as possible. And then the second one of the constitutional motions, uh, Honorable Guajube, as responded to by uh, Mr. Caso, this is a matter which was uh, raised on Monday during the debate by the leader of the opposition party. And subsequently on Tuesday, I then received a written motion with regards to that matter. This is a matter which I'm applying my mind to as uh, Mr. Caso has already indicated. And of course, with the advice of my legal team. Um, and then the other matters uh, relevant to the speakers, for instance, forum, the CPA, uh, the one of the speakers forum is another agent uh, matter which must be brought here. But members should appreciate that when these matters sometimes are brought off reports from conferences and so on, we will have to dedicate a special time, which is a, an extraordinary uh, programming committee to deal with that specific issue. For instance, on the matter, if, if it, it, it requires a, a, quite an amount of time where the delegation led by the chair of the NCOP uh, who leads that team together with the chief group, they need to take us through all of the contentious issues which have arisen at the Pan-African Parliament and they are proposed and we forward on those matters. So that's not a matter you want to schedule. To in an ordinary meeting of the programming committee, because a meeting of the programming committee should really deal with issues of programming. So once those matters have been clarified, then they can be put on the programming committee. So it's a lot of information which is expected for of us to receive at that meeting. The same applied to the speakers forum, which is the legislative sector, which has been referred to by the deputy speaker. So those two items, I would request that we have a special meeting which is going to discuss those issues. You can schedule the meeting before next week, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, which will be your normal programming committee meeting, or the following week after the, that programming uh, committee meeting. So I, I, I want the, Mr. Castle to take note of that and his team that there should be interaction with the office of the chairperson and with the office of the chief of the majority to prepare such a report and the office of the deputy speaker to prepare for the report of the legislative sector so that these three items are discussed in a separate meeting so that they do not interfere with the work of the programming committee. By the time the programming committee deals with the matters, it should be a matter of these issues appearing on the com on the com on the passions thereof. Should be an extraordinary meeting, and the sooner we have that extraordinary committee meeting, the better. As the chief group of the majority members. And then, are there any other matters arising out of the draft parliamentary committee which was presented by Honorable uh, Lisuma? None. I don't see hands. Um, 
Are there any announcements, Honorable uh, Mr. Carson? Madam Speaker, not really, except to indicate that um, the smaller parties or the other parties had asked for additional seats at the Kudov Chamber, and I've discussed that with uh, Madam Speaker, and there will be additional seats, uh, loose seats, though, on the side, um, about seven of those for, for the other parties. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That is for next week, Wednesday. Thank you very much, Mr. Kasso. Honorable members, as we end this meeting, I do want to once more reiterate what I said earlier on, which is that those of you who are around the parliamentary precinct, if you wish to go and see how the chamber looks like, uh, you, you are invited to do so. You can raise that matter with Mr. Tasso or, or Ms. Jawa. Number two, just to say that indeed the chamber is well prepared, well organized. Uh, there was still going to be branding done. Of course, by Monday, everything should be ready. But I do want to make the point that, colleagues, the reality is that it is a very, very small space. It's beautiful, quite intimate, but it is very small uh, for our purpose. But on the other hand, as I have been consulting with several key role players here in Parliament, I do learn that uh, sometimes members of Parliament are not available to fill in the seats allocated to them in Parliament. The Honourable Chief Whip made an example with uh, the debates of SONA, Monday and Tuesday, where you had some parties which were well represented, but you equally had some parties which were not fully represented and therefore did not occupy the full space allocated to them. Honourable members, I'm raising this because it will be a sad day, it will be an embarrassment for us if we use, we proceed to use uh, the chamber as prepared now, which is the Good Hope uh, Chamber. And we find that honorable members can hardly fill the, the chamber, which, cons which will take about plus minus 70 members. I think it will, it will be very sad. And I would like you honorable members to raise these matters with your chief whips, I'm sure the chief of the, of the majority party will also find time to raise this matter with uh, the chief whips of forum, which she chairs. That on the 23rd, which is the budget day, it really will be expected that all honourable members, which are uh, delegated by the by their parties to represent them in the debate, in the budget presentation, that they should avail themselves and not have empty seats when we could have other members occupying those seats. Lastly, just to say that one of the things which I know the officials were dealing with yesterday is allocation of seats to the media right at the back it is a slightly difficult uh, situation, honorable members. The officials were still trying to figure out how they are going to do that. Um, it, it's, um, we're trying to also make sure that we do not, uh, there isn't a stampede and, and uh, you know, con unnecessary congestion in there and at the risk of, of spreading the virus, even though we'll be having our masks on. But please feel free once more to visit the chamber, the Good Hope Chamber. It is beautiful, but take note of some of the issues I have raised right now so that clarity can be provided you, to you when you visit the chamber. On that note, honorable members, I do want to once more say it was beautiful, it was constructive, it was a good sauna debate for the past two days. 
and 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 thank you very much for that. On that note, honourable members, we now adjourn this meeting until next week, Thursday. Thank you, honourable members. Thank you, honourable speaker. Thank you, honourable speaker. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, speaker. Thank you. Recording Thank you. stopped.